The object of Gilgamesh is a myth, a mythical story about the great bull of heaven and the warrior Gilgamesh who overtakes the bull of heaven and all these various things, right? So there's a lot of these themes in the Epic of Gilgamesh, which predates the writing of the Bible in terms of the Old Testament. The question is whether it predates the actual origins of the stories in the Bible, because, you know, the Bible goes way back to the beginning of the world. So there's that. Um, but um, the Epic of Gilgamesh has within its pages a flood story that the whole world is flooded because of its sin and God starts over again, or the gods kind of start over again. And so the question is, did the Bible borrow that story from the Epic of Gilgamesh, considering that Gilgamesh, the story, was written so much earlier than the Bible? In other words, does the Bible copy from other religious texts? And so these stories aren't really true. They're just stories that are common and co-opted in the Bible, borrowed from other things. It's not really the inspired word of God. And the flood didn't really happen. It's just this thing. What's interesting about that is that when you do some of the research, actually, there are flood narratives in almost every culture that goes back really, really far. Like the Chinese have a whole flood narrative in their culture, too, that the world is flooded. You see this in ancient cultures, that there was a flood narrative there. And they have nothing to do with each other. That Chinese epic has nothing to do with Gilgamesh, uh, or, nor the, the Bible itself. So now you have multiple cultures talking about a worldwide cataclysm where there were people, where the world was flooded and everyone dies because of their wickedness. So now you can draw two conclusions from that, possibly. The first conclusion is it's a common myth and everyone makes up this story. That's possible, but it's a little convenient, isn't it? That everyone happens to make, why not fire? Why floods? Why not earthquakes? Why floods? So that's one thing to think about. Why all that? The other way to so so it's it's it possible they all came up with the same story. I guess it's possible. It's highly unlikely, or or is it possible that this thing actually happened and that everyone records it? The survivors, as they go and spread out into various nations, tell the story of how they got there, which included a flood. Now, what ends up happening in the telling of that story? is that people will add in cultural issues and details. So they'll form their own religions, they'll form their own language, and they'll add in their religious ideas to why the flood actually happened. So the flood actually happening is attested to by multiple different cultural witnesses. Different cultures attest to a flood, which doesn't mean it's less likely. It means it's more likely. If I, if I brought in four witnesses as a lawyer to a trial, and I said, what happened? And those four witnesses all told me thus and such did and said thus and such in a, court of, in, in, a in a conference room somewhere or in a restaurant or whatever it was. Am I going to say, yeah, you're just making that stuff up because people tend to make that stuff up? Or is it more likely that the thing happened because now I have four witnesses to it? So we don't have a problem with witnesses. We have actually corroboration because there's more witnesses um, to this event. Their interpretations of it, that's a different story. People add things all the time to these stories. So, so now the question becomes, which one is true? And there's good reason to believe the biblical flood narrative is actually true for a couple of reasons. Here's my chief reason for believing the biblical flood narrative, that God flooded the inhabitable world because of its wickedness at some point in the finite past. Jesus taught it. Jesus taught it as a historical fact, and Jesus rose from the dead. And guys who rise from the dead have credibility. <laughs> um, so that's why I believe his version over Gilgamesh. One last thing on this, Lisa, is that when you see, and there's this big fad now, and it ha it's so funny, this whole thing happens in cycles. There is this internet uh, movie called Zeitgeist, where they try to show that the Bible's narrative of a dying and rising God is a copycat. Jesus is just a copycat of other pagan religions like Mithraism or Osiris or, or you know, uh, Hani the Circle Drawer and all these different people who had 12 disciples, they were born on December 25th, and they were born of virgins, they die, and then they rise again three days later and appear to everybody. Okay, that's what they say, that there's all these different religions that teach the same thing, and they all predate Christianity. And so Jesus was just a borrowed idea from these pagan myths.
Here's the problem with that. When you do your research, you realize something. First, first, almost none of those stories are actual parallels to the Bible at all. All that stuff is just made up. Christians did not believe Jesus was born on December 25th. We actually have no idea, a good idea, about when he was born. So, December 25th is a good day as any to pick to celebrate his birth. So, that's not an issue. The Osiris thing, for example, he didn't have 12 disciples. There's no such thing about that in Osiris' 12 disciples. What, what is it we're talking about? And Osiris didn't die as a sacrifice and then rise from the dead again three days later. Rather, Osiris was reborn after being cut up into different pieces and put together by his mother and dipped in the river Styx to be the god of the underworld. He didn't, re he didn't become alive again. He stayed dead and became the god of the underworld. That's not even close to being the same thing. So oftentimes when people say these parallels prove that the stories were made up, the parallels aren't even there. And when there are parallels, by the way, when there are parallels, those religions actually come after Christianity. And so if anybody borrowed from anything, it was them. Gilgamesh, that's not the case. Gilgamesh was before, but you can already see the answer I gave on that one. Um, but even if there are parallels, even if there are parallels, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Let me give you a good example of this. So there's a story of a ship that was manufactured in England. The biggest ship ever created that carried passengers. And it set sail in England on, in April and crossed the North Atlantic to go to New York City. And it was the biggest ship ever created at that time. And it had only half the number of lifeboats it needed to save everybody in case of a disaster. And a disaster happens. And that ship runs into an iceberg and it sinks and almost everybody dies in the icy waters of the Atlantic in April. What am I talking about? Nope, I'm talking about a fictional ship called the Titan. That book called Futility or the Wreck of the Titan was written years before the Titanic ever was created. Good. Almost exactly parallel. It's creepy and weird. Okay. But it doesn't prove that the Titanic didn't happen. The Titan is a fictional ship. The Titanic really happened. So just because you see parallels doesn't mean anything. You look at the evidence for it itself. Why do you think this thing that the Bible says happened or didn't happen? Gilgamesh, Mithra, Osiris have nothing to do with the actual history of the Christian faith.